I'm Jason Leahy, Executive Director of the Illinois Principals Association. Thank you for joining me for this IPA talk. Super excited about uh, my guest here today, Dr. Jeff Prickett, who is principal at uh, McHenry Community High School up in McHenry County and uh, recently a, a published author. So, uh, Jeff, sure, a pleasure to have you here with me this afternoon. There it is. Yes, there it sir. Is. There it is. Thank you, Jason. Becoming principal, pleasure. right? Becoming principal. Yeah, yeah. Becoming principal. It's a pleasure to be here with you. Thanks well, for having me on. Well, absolutely. Pleasure to have you. And uh, we'll definitely get into that here in just a little bit. But, you know, as I've been doing these IPA talks now over the last 18 months or so, I, I find myself basically asking this kind of the same question right out of the gate is, how you doing? You, you hanging in there okay? Oh, thanks. Thanks for asking. I mean, yes, absolutely. Every day is uh, another opportunity to, you know, work with kids and teachers and colleagues. And uh, I, I, I would be lying if I, if I, if I, you know, said that this was a normal start to the school year. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I've been doing this a long time. You know, twenty five years. Uh, this this is my twenty fifth year in public education, and not nineteen of those as a as a public school administrator. And this is by far the toughest start to the year, for sure, yeah. on a num on a number of levels and for many different reasons. And um, um, but I think. Uh, Knock on wood, we're in the seventh week here in McHenry, and um, we are, you know, finally. I, th I think, I think, Jason. I, I almost hate to say it, but I, th I think we're. Well, knock on wood for you there. Uh, thank you. I think we're settling in a little bit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's great. So yeah. you got through homecoming at this point. You've done some of those kinds of things. Uh, yeah. You know, it's we're about through the first quarter here overall. Uh, no doubts. Uh, how how are things going for your team? And and uh, you know. What do you find yourself doing with them just to, to keep them up and going? Jeff, sure. I know you're a real positive guy and culture and climate obviously are really important to you. So I'm just curious, you know, one thing I didn't mention in the intro, you are also, in addition to being a published author, uh, our 2021 high school principal of the year for the state of Illinois. So obviously yeah, yeah. congratulations for that. Thank we'll you. be recognizing you as part of our annual conference here in a few weeks um, in Peoria. Can't but, wait. Uh, you know, what, what do you find yourself doing to, to keep everybody's spirits up and keep moving forward? Well, I mean, that, that's a that's a big question. I'm glad you asked. And, and uh, you know, uh, you mentioned culture and climate, and those are two huge things for me. And uh, we you also did mention homecoming and we did just finish our homecoming week last week. And, and I will tell you what the spirit around the school community was higher than I have seen in a long, long time. And, you know, you can point to the fact that that kids and, and teachers and parents just wanted to be out and together and to experience some semblance of what the, of what for them is normal. And um, our, our, our spirit week was incredible. We had a significant turnout. We had, um, uh, we got, we got a homecoming uh, Friday night win. <laughs> so uh, that was big. That was big. And Who'd you uh, play? Uh, we played Dundee Crown. Okay. Yeah, Dundee it. Crown. And it was a it was a great win. They played hard. And uh like all the teams that I've witnessed so far and every Friday night this year so far have played hard, but we fought, we got a, a big win. And uh our our dance on Saturday night was held outside yeah. and, on at Peterson Park Beach up here, and we had a, a, about 1,560 kids wow. out at the homecoming dance, and it was spectacular. They just had a fantastic time, and our team did a great job pulling it off. And so, you know, I, I think every high school principal hopes that, you know, if you get the homecoming win, <laughs> and if you've got good, good attendance at homecoming activities and events, and the spirit is high, that carries you through for a few months. And I'm hoping that that is what happens here in our district. Um, uh, kids are just really happy to be back and it, it's coming with, with its challenges too. But, um, you know, I'm just trying to, like you mentioned, keep my team's spirits positive and, and that's hard to do though. You know I mean? It's, it's been a rough start, as I mentioned, uh, and we're just trying to kids and teachers alike, you know, you, you hear, hear and read articles about teachers feeling like it's, you know, like they're November tired already. Right. right? Yeah. And I've even tired. heard like spring break tired, spring break oh, tired. It's, 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 it's yeah. very true. It's very true. You know, and so just trying to keep people's spirits uh, positive and go in every day with a positive attitude and be, 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 you know, also be cognizant of the fact that, you know, you, you hear about toxic positivity. And I, I try really hard not to 
push positivity down people's yeah. throats, but at the same time, just trying to, you know, keep everyone's spirits high and, and keep a positive face and uh, have a good time. You know, I, I'm, I'm really big on having a good time at school. I think that we should have a good time while yeah. we get, get down to business as well. So mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah. Well, and I, I, and just to be fully transparent, you know, I talk about toxic positivity, the, the thing I have wrestled with quite a bit, you know, even from our organization and, and to be here as a service to school leaders and, and be an encourager of school leaders is in this moment, you know, we've been been working at this pandemic and, and crisis leadership for, for quite a while now, more than we're used yeah. to normally having to endure over a long stretch of time is how to make sure that encouragement, support, service doesn't come across as being hollow, right? It's just, you say those same things, whatever. And, and so definitely, a change. I don't necessarily in this, in making that comment, have a, have an elixir or a cure per yeah. se, other than just having to continue to stay in there, grind out, grind it out, stay in, in good relationships with people as much as anything else, I would say. So. Well, that that's it. I mean, the relationship piece is huge. And, uh, you know, we're, we're a, we're a big high school district, you know, um, and, and the relationship piece is so critical for, for everyone and, you know, me included. And it's, it's um, when you have a big staff, it's, it's difficult to get to everybody, you know, mm -hmm. to really hear from everybody. So I depend uh, on surveys and putting surveys out to staff and knowing that it's not all going to be, you know, positive results <laughs> that you get back, but it's critical mm -hmm. to just to get a, try to get a pulse on what's happening and how people are feeling and, and then also the, the even the, the bigger piece is to follow up on that. Yeah. And uh, so I did that uh, this year and uh, we, we put together an action team or a building leadership team to address some of those issues and um, got a good number of staff who wanted to be a part of that and just awesome. to really come together and solve problems together. So that's terrific. Well, kudos yeah. to you for, for stepping out because that's risky. Because mm. um, when you put surveys out, you're you're bound to hear from those that maybe have some things to say that aren't always the most positive. Oh, guarantee uh, it. Yeah, I promise right. you. No. <laughs> Absolutely. No, that. Well, in addition to, to working through the, the pandemic, like that wasn't enough, Jeff, you guys had kind of this reconstitution of the high school there, had a big addition to the high school, a lot of things going on in McHenry. Can you can you just walk us through that a little bit and, and what's been taking place over the last several months there in, in your school. Yeah, sure. Well, I mean, Jason, really the last couple of years, because un unbeknownst to us, when we passed a referendum um, two, almost three years ago, we, we, you know, obviously didn't know a pandemic was going to hit. Uh, so what, what we're a two high school district, if any, if people are unfamiliar with McHenry up here in the northern, northern part of, of Illinois, um, and, and we have we have two high schools, East Side and West Side. And I was the principal at the East Campus, the smaller of the two schools. And um, long story short, what we decided to do with community support and backing was to was to really get rid of the two comprehensive high school model and turn it into the, the East Side became the freshman campus where I sit today in this office. Um, and then the west side of town became the upper campus. So all 10 through 12 students in the community go to the upper campus. So um, what that did, what, you know, what that looks like is 600 kids here at the freshman campus and about 1,700 um, at the upper campus, 1,700 10 through 12th graders. Our west campus principal, Marsha Potoff, retired. And uh, I, I, we didn't replace her. I became principal of both campuses. Yeah. And so... Um, you know, and, and plus we built 70,000 square feet onto the West campus, what is now the upper campus um, and is the new uh, center for science, technology and industry, a beautiful, yeah. um, it looks like a college campus almost in, in that section of the building. It added another floor to it. So it's four floors over there, uh, the new, the new center. Um, and so can so, you talk us just quick, since you brought that up, yeah. Jeff, and I, I know in its title, it might seem obvious what, what all that entails, what's what's housed there, but can you just share with us a little bit about uh, what you're looking to accomplish in that new space, what uh, kids are really doing? Absolutely. So we have a huge, huge uh, manufacturing um, and trades in industry uh, community here in McHenry and the surrounding areas. And so um, our kids, you know, in that center, we have a we have state of the art graphics lab, state of the art metals and manufacturing, woods, photojournalism, robotics lab, 
um, kids are learning how to fly drones. Um, and when they graduate, they will be certified in those areas so they can leave out of high school with a certificate in hand and get a job making 60,000 plus a year yeah. right out of right out of high school if if they're not planning to go to college. Um, our many our partners are tremendous um, you know, uh, here in the community and they work with us and they, they, they gave input into uh, what was needed in that center. And our teachers are, are actually skilled tradesmen and they know exactly what to, and in fact, they helped us build the lab space. Um, it's, it's just state of the art, Jason. And I would welcome anyone out for a tour. And uh, we had a local a representative uh, come out just last week and uh, super impressed by the facility. Um, but we wanted to make sure that, you know, kids understood that, that this space and the thing, the skills that they would be learning, they would be able to take into the community with them. And if the college is not their thing, um, then they'd be able to get land on their feet once they graduate from McHenry High School. That's terrific. So, well, I'll be sure to stop in there when I'm, absolutely. Uh, when I'm in the area. That's uh, that's super impressive. Just real quick, who, uh, who are you partnering with, like community college when it comes to to some of that uh, or, or with the certification oh, in particular? Go ahead. I'm sorry. Ab no, absolutely. Um, McHenry County Co College up here, yeah. MCC, uh, is a yeah. huge partner of ours. Uh, some of our uh, industry and trades partners are our Scott Forge company up here. Um, a couple of other manufacturing companies that escape my mind right now uh, on the spot here, but you know. That's um, okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's terrific. Well, appreciate that. That's wonderful. Well, let's uh, let's pivot here a little bit, Jeff. I could talk with you all day as a former high school principal here myself, just about the things yeah. you've got going on there in, in your building. But um, let's talk about this book, Becoming Principal. Yes, um, sir. Yes, sir. And, and the right. little bit I've I've read of it, uh, it's really um, it's it's interesting in the way that you've approached this, and in, in the way that you have really talking about your story, right, uh, in your journey of leadership and all of that. So so tell us about it. Yeah, well, thank you, Jason, for the opportunity to talk about it here with you today. Um, becoming principal has been a, a, a journey for me. Well, obviously, in the literal sense, you know, of becoming a principal after, you know, how, how many years? I mean, my yeah. first principalship uh, began in uh, 2004 when I was elementary principal. That's that's really where this where the book takes place is that uh, is that elementary school. I spent eight years there, uh, Murphy Elementary School, if I can name it. Oh yeah, absolutely. In Round Lake Park in the Round Lake School District 116 up here in Lake County. Um, I spent eight years, ten years in the district, eight years at that elementary school. And as I reflected, honestly, Jason, it was when I when I was about to turn 50 years old. I had my 50th birthday last year. Yeah. So about a year prior to that, I started really reflecting on like how I, how I got to this point, you know, how I became literally how I became principal and every thought, everything turned back to those kids and the teachers and that community who really made me into the, the leader that I am today. I attribute uh, just about everything to those initial really formative eight years for me, um, just learning how, just learning. I remember sitting at the interview table and uh, I talk about it in the book, you know, and the, the mayor of Round Lake Park is sitting across from me at the horseshoe table. And, um, you know, I thought the mayor, why, why is the mayor here? You know, this must be a really, really important job. And, and uh, you know, for them it was, and obviously it turned out to be that way for me too, but it's written, it's written, Jason, you know, very narratively. So it's, I, th I think it's really easy to, to read. It's not going to be a, you know, if you're looking to, to find a book that shows you how to become a principal, it's not that the don't let the title mislead you becoming principal. You know, this is my journey of becoming principal. And yes, there are lots of lessons throughout the book and stories and um, failures and successes and triumphs. And, and um, I, I just really, um, I enjoyed writing. It was very cathartic. And um, um, I'm hoping that the people who are reading it, including a lot of the kids who went to Murphy Elementary School yeah. now in their you know, late teens and 20s and getting married, and they're all picking up copies of the book. And just uh, I hope that they I hope that they really can resonate with some of the stories in there. And they remember. Yeah, yeah that's that's terrific. Well, as I, as I think about this, Jeff, what I what I love about the way that you approach the book you know, we, we provide resources here that are like tailored to here are the steps you need to take sure. in order to secure that job. Here's how you write your resume. Here's how you prepare for the interview. Uh, you know, all of that. We don't necessarily get into the fact that, hey, you might 
be sitting across you know the table from ex you know community leader like the mayor sure and having that, that type of understanding and and all of it and what I love about your approach is is you know what you've done to to really personalize it and and give you know your account of what it took in order to to land into that spot now let me ask you this you know what what got you interested in in school leadership to begin with mm, wow i mean that i i you know i, I remember clearly um so so i i run a a, a podcast uh you you've met him uh, virtually uh, adam dewitt yep. he's a he's a he's a longtime friend of mine and he's uh, currently an administrator up in wisconsin but but we started together in u46 in elgin district u46 and we taught together um in his second year my first year in the in that district second year first and second year teachers we taught together for a few years there and um i think we were always had a, this competitive spirit and so we both started look we went to see um, the, the district brought in Alfie Cohn <laughs> and we, wow. went to see, yeah, we went to see, it was at Streamwood high school on the stage at Streamwood high school. And we went to see Alfie Cohn. He came in for one of our Institute days. And from that moment on, we both were like thinking, oh my gosh, they're, they're like just these big thoughts, much bigger than the classroom level. And, um, you know, uh, and we just, we went into a program and, um, you know, b- both became, became school leaders and he went up to Wisconsin and which I tease him about all the time, heading behind the cheddar curtain. Yeah. Right. <laughs> He's had better success up there. As yeah, far as I know. But, yeah uh, for sure. That's, that's beside the point so, with that. Well, let me, let me ask you, Jeff, when I think, when I reflect back on, you know, my first couple of years in administration in particular, you know, I, I think about form, some of the formative experiences I had and particularly I felt, I felt like it, at that point in time, I had a couple of key teachers who I got to know that really helped me out and, and probably helped me out in, in spite of myself, which I was really grateful for. Can you, can you talk any about some of those kinds of relationships of, of either staff members you had or, or those that were around you that really helped you kind of work along? Because those first couple of years, even not in a pandemic as a school leader, can be particularly challenging as you mm-hmm. find your way, as you think about the emotional shift that has to occur, you know, and, and the mindset shift that has to occur between being in the classroom. And now you are, you know, not only responsible for, for the students in your classroom, but the kids in, in the entire building. Not that as a teacher, you don't have some of that, but as the principal, sure. obviously you bear a, a lot of that responsibility. So, you know, who are some of those folks that, uh, that were pretty important to you as, as you were getting started? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you want? Can, can I name them? I'm, I'm, I'm good with it. Is your, if you're, I'm good with naming names. If you're okay, I, I am. I am good with it. I think they deserve the the credit. You know, I I I, I always think about you know my my start in administration came um, one summer. My very first administrative job was for a dean of students up here in, in McHenry, yeah. of all places. Um, I, I stayed for a couple of years, and then I went out to Round Lake. Um, but I was a dean and an assistant principal at Parkland Middle School here under Dan Johnson, who was the principal at the time, and he's now currently superintendent at Johnsburg High School here, also in McHenry County. Um, and he, well, he went, he left, and he became high school principal there at Johnsburg and then the superintendent. Um, but I always, I, I model, I try to model, I've told him this before. Um, and he was, he was actually surprised by it. So I was, I was glad that he, you know, he was kind of taken aback. Um, I model my leadership style after him. You know, it, when you were talking to him, um, it was like, you were the only person in the room, you know, he made you feel like your, your issues and your concerns were, were, were special. And, um, you know, he, he was great at that. He had great people skills and he still does to this day. So I, th- I feel like, you know, when I was a young AP Dean, before I hit that first elementary principal job, he was the one who really pushed me. In fact, when he, when he was leaving, um, he said, I think it's time for you to look for your first principal job as well. When he was leaving to go take over John Johnsburg. Um, and I, you know, I've, I was of course, you know, thinking there's just, just no way. I don't understand why you would say that to me. Um, but I did. And I took the leap and, and, and got the job and told them, I remember telling them in round Lake, I don't know the first thing about being an elementary principal, except that I went to one many, many years ago. <laughs> and for whatever reason, you know, they hired me. Um, and so then the next person who, who really had an impact on my life. And I don't know if he's still around, but at the time, Jason Round Lake was, uh, was, was under state control. 
Um, and so they had gotten rid of their, their entire central office um, and brought in a CEO and a CEO and a, and a financial uh, guru. And they turned that district around. And the, obviously, as you know, the story of Round Lake, they're back in black and have been for quite a number of, of years, I think since 2008 and 2010, somewhere around there. But at the time, Dennis Stonewall was the, was the CEO who had brought me into the district and um, um, just a fantastic fantastic guy. And after my first or second year, he brought me into this district office and he said, you know, Jeff, I think you should write a book on climate and culture. And uh, again, I thought, wow, I don't know that I know the first thing about it, but um, you know, that stuck with me all these years. And not that he was an, uh, an educator by trade, but he was running the district and, and really did a darn good job of it. So a couple of people there who really and of course, Adam DeWitt, my my co-host on the podcast and longtime uh, friend and educator who pushed me to always do my best. So, yeah, well, what I what I'll just say, speak to Adam, of course, I appreciate the opportunity to be on both of your podcast yeah. there uh, several months ago. That was definitely a lot of fun. And, and what I what I appreciate about what you guys model that we've really been talking about with school leaders, particularly during this time, but I think it's applicable at any time is how critical it is to be in a, in a close peer relationship, you know, just to have somebody to, to lean on, to talk to, to commiserate with, you know, encourage one another, you know, bust each other's chops if necessary, hold each other yeah. appropriately accountable if necessary. Uh, and so, you know, I, I appreciate that about, about both of you and, and modeling that, Thank whether you. you know that you've been doing that or not, but I, I would, would hope that, more school leaders would be in those kinds of relationships because I think it's pretty important. Thank you. Much appreciated. Yeah, we definitely are able to do that. And I, I value that very much with him. And I, I would echo your, your thoughts on that, that I think that um, everybody needs that, you know, you need that circle, whether it's one person or a, a number of people, mm -hmm. um, whether it's in person or virtually, I think you have to, you know, you hear about people talking about finding their tribe. And, and I really yeah. think that that's critical that we do as educators. Yeah, you bet. Well, I'd be remiss though back with the book here, Jeff, I didn't ask this question. So how'd you get it done? I mean, you know, we've both written dissertations. We've done some of that kind of yeah. stuff, you know, but this is a little different. And and also you don't have the the whole, hey, I, I got to get this dissertation done or I'm going to pay tuition forever right. kind of hanging over you. Yeah. Yeah. And, I, and I'm sure, you know, you, you're under some, maybe some contract obligations or sure. whatever, but still, you know, it takes a lot of time, effort and, and dedication to, to do it. So so what was your process uh, for, yeah. for anybody else that might be interested in picking up a pen or hitting the keyboard and getting it done? Sure, sure. Well, I'm glad you asked that because I definitely wanted to uh, give a mention out, you know, to my to my publisher. Um, but when I first, you know, I had written probably over a year over a year ago, a couple of years ago, I had just started writing it, and and when I got to about seven thousand, set between seven and ten thousand words, I thought, you know what, I'm a, maybe I should try to shop this around a little bit. I'd love to see where we're just 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 experiment with that, see where that takes me. Who knows if I'll ever get anywhere, but I'm really enjoying writing it. And, and um, I had some encouragement from people to, to try and just, you know, shop it around and see if anyone was interested. So I did that and I, I, I talked to a couple of publishers and they both thought it was a, you know, a great idea. And, and, um, and then um, uh, Darren Peppard, who is a, you know, now former superintendent out in Colorado. Um, and I've known him for quite a while on, through Twitter, on social media. He, he posted in, in uh, December of 2020 that he was going to, for one of his new year goals, start a publishing company based on his book. His book was the first book that he wrote was called Road to Awesome. And uh, he published it with Codebreaker and Brian Aspinall up there in Canada. And uh, he was going to branch out and go his own way and start his own publishing company. And I reached out to him and I said, hey, let's set up a chat. And, you know, I, I want to pitch my idea and see what you think. We had we sat on a Zoom call for about an hour. And at the end of that hour, he was like, I love it. I want to I want to publish you. And the next day I had a contract in hand and, and uh, signed wow. it, got it back to him. And we set a goal of April um, April of 2021. Uh, and sure enough, I had it, I had it finished by April of 2021. 
That's terrific. So did you write a little bit every day then? Or Well, so that's the other thing. I mean, you know, I, I played around with that a lot. You know, um, mm -hmm. and writers will tell you that, you know, it's important to write every single day. Uh, well, I try yeah, writers aren't like full time building principles leading well, <laughs> to a pandemic right now. I mean, you you got a building project and a reconstitution, your high school Oof. leading through the pandemic. And, and then you throw a book on top of that. And I know you got other responsibilities at home and start sure. too. So sure. Uh, sure. holy smokes. Right. Yeah. The kids and the kids and family and all that. Right. But um, so and you run, you run like like 14 miles a day, too, I think, don't you? There's well, a few. A few. I run a few <laughs> miles a day, maybe, maybe between 14 and 20 miles a week. There Jason, you go. Okay. I, I try it. to get out. I try to get out there early every morning, starts my day out. Right. Right. So I think those habits though, like, like, like running, I think those are critical to starting your day and having a productive day. And, but writing didn't work every day for me. You know, I just couldn't find, you know, as you know, things come up and you just yeah. can't find the time. So I set a weekly goal. I, I said, if I, I calculated it out, <laughs> you know, I wanted to get to between like 35 and 40,000 words, which is the size of, you know, there's a, uh, an education book these days, yeah. probably yeah. somewhere, somewhere around that frame. I calculated it out and I knew that by April, I had to write a certain number of words a month. So I broke that down into a week and I tried to hit my weekly goal of words every week. And, and I was able to, I found I was able to do it that way. That way, I, if I didn't feel bad, if I couldn't write every single day. You know, yeah. so I would suggest that to anyone, you know, know what you're capable of doing. Maybe don't say, say to yourself, OK, I'm going to write every single day, because then if you don't, you'll feel guilty. Right. Right. That's and right. So I just tried to set a monthly and then a weekly goal and I was able to hit that. No problem. So, yeah. yeah. Well, that's fascinating. And appreciate you sharing that process. because yeah, I know there are others out there wrestling with that and, and oh, wondering, yeah. wondering how they get that done. And, and then I, I think they. They try to set up this system, and when it doesn't work, it just sometimes becomes a little, little depressing. I, I would say people get yeah, mad about that. Yeah. So it, it can defeat you. It right. can defeat you. So you, I mean, don't quit. I mean, try try something different. You know, for for me, that was a monthly and then a weekly word goal, and that that seemed to work for me. Yeah, you bet, you bet. Well, obviously, becoming a principal when you did at that point in time, Jeff, it's a little different than what some of the things we have today and, and, and pandemic aside, aside, it's it obviously the profession and society in general has evolved, you know, um, and I know this is important to you because you care a lot about kids and education and the profession, you know, what, uh, as you think about people becoming principal today, what, uh, mm -hmm. what would you share with them about, about the job, about the importance of the job? And, and, uh, you know, I'll just throw one more in there of uh, things they need to consider uh, as they're contemplating getting into it. Yeah, that's a, it's an important question. And I think that um, it's important that we continually talk about it and, and push people in that direction. You know, I, I remember I, I've heard from teachers, for example, telling kids who thought they wanted to be teachers, Oh, don't, you know, don't go into that profession. You know, that's a hard profession. It doesn't pay well. And, and people have actually changed their mind because of that, you know, yeah. whereas, whereas uh, I've also heard on the flip side, many, many people encouraging people. And I would do the same encouraging people to become, if you're thinking about leadership, if you're thinking about the principalship, um, I, we need you, <laughs> you know, that's right. We need, we need good people. And uh, if you're afraid of, here's the thing that I learned. If you're afraid of leaving the classroom because you think that you're not going to be able to make connections and relationships with kids, that's not just simply not true. That's right. If it's important to you, you will find a way to do that. I, I have, like I've talk, talked about in the book, I have stories in here and quotes from kids uh, because I still keep in contact with them. You know, social media has made it very easy. You know, these kids are in their late 20s. They're getting married. They're having children of their own. And these are all kids I've known since they were in kindergarten, first grade. Mm -hmm. It is very possible to maintain relationships with students. Very positive, very professional, very. And I, and I would say personal ones, because those are the ones that count. You know, you get to know people, then that that's when the relationship begins to blossom. So we need you. We need good people in the principalship. The, there's a high turnover rate. In, in school administration because it's hard. And you've heard the phrase, it's lonely at the top. And indeed it is. <laughs> it is very lonely at the, at the top and, and it's hard. 
Um, but there are good people to surround yourself with. And um, the, the perks of the job and the, and the benefits definitely outweigh the cons, in my opinion. Any, any day, hands down. If I'm having a bad day, I hit the hallway. I, I walk through classrooms. I see kids. Um, and they just, you know, that's why we do it. That's what's worth it. For sure. Well, and it's the heart about the job makes it so great, right? And so Absolutely. Memorable, memorable, all of that. Well, Dr. Jeff Prickett, sure uh, appreciate you spending a little bit of time with me. Looking forward again to seeing you at conference where you know, not wait. only do we honor you as, as our high school principal of the year this year, but also you're going to be one of our Ignite presenters. Yes, sir. Uh, finishing up the conference. We really love that that uh, fast-paced presentation. So, in fact, I think you are the the one bringing up the anchor seat I, here at the very end. So, I, I no think pressure, I you know, they're going to, you'll be the last thing that they remember from uh, our 50th hey. anniversary conference. <laughs> Well, I hope I hope everyone sticks around for it. I am bringing up the anchor. I'm the last speaker, like you said. No pressure. Uh, what is it? A, f- a 22 slides in five minutes. That's no right. Problem. It's a quickie. No yep. It's a five minute presentation. Make sure you stick around for it. You won't want to miss it or any of the presenters. I can't oh, wait. Yeah. Can't wait to see you down there. It's going to be a good a good couple of days. Yeah, a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Well, thanks for your for your time here today, and and uh, best of luck with the book. And of course, I'm sure people can find that uh, on all the usual places. Correct. Uh, absolutely. It's available on Amazon. And I think uh, very soon, if not already, Barnes and Noble uh, all online. So, yep. Awesome. Awesome. Very good. Appreciate well, your time. Thanks for having me on. My pleasure. Well, again, my name is Jason Leahy with Dr. Jeff Prickett, who is the high school principal of the year this year for the state of Illinois, principal of McHenry Community High School up in McHenry, in McHenry County. A lot of McHenry going on there. With uh, that, so it's hard to the forget. County seat. <laughs> yeah, you bet. But uh, also author of his uh, newest book, uh, becoming principal, really exciting piece, very personal, and, and I, I encourage you to check that out. My name is Jason Leahy with IPA. If there's anything that the association can do for you, don't hesitate to give us a call or check us out on the web at www.ilprinciples.org. Take care.